I'm out of the bathroom and back home. Let's talk some football. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for just a bet outside. I am your host, Steven, and I am back home, baby. That's right. No more videos from the hotel bathroom. That was something. That was, that was interesting. You guys had some pretty funny comments, that's for sure. Thanks for being patient with me uh, and understanding. I had to get out a player prop short instead of a full video. Had a lot going on. Family event that day. Like I said, my aunt and uncle's 50th wedding anniversary all went well. And Saturday, we left at 2 p.m. on the road for 12 hours and got home at 2 a.m. That was brutal. But anyways, if I seem a little tired, that's why it's been a long, long weekend. That's for sure. But I'm ready to get back into it. And guess what? It is officially, officially NBA week, baby. That's right. It starts on Tuesday with two big games. And we're going to be here every single weeknight to give you the best bets. Give you some research help as we get later on in the season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but back to this for football now. The trends had the worst week they've had all year, and it was still seven and six. How about that? Fifty nine and twenty on the season. Unfreaking believable. Um, in this video, we're going to recap week seven, how we did in our bets, how we did on the head to head bet between me and Ryan. Uh, spoiler alert: I crushed it. Um, anyways, also three NFL week seven takeaways, like I always like to do on these videos at the end of the weekend. And then we preview and give out our best bet. And I got a couple leans for the Monday night football game between the 49ers and the Vikings. We got a lot to get into. Before we get into the bets recap, hit that like button, guys. Just tap it. We are so close to 7,000 subscribers. So if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment below. It sounds like NFL is killing a lot of people last few weeks. And for us, it's been a little down, too. Uh, we were up four or five units as of like three weeks ago. And now we're down a couple units. So it is what it is. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. but. Uh, Let's talk, let's go, guys. I'm ready to go. Let's talk some football, and it starts with the bets recap. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie. Primetime games have been killing me lately. We lost the under 40 in the Jacksonville Saints game. Uh, I think we lost like three of the last four or something. We did win the Cowboys game over the uh, Chargers, but man, oh, man, those standalone games are different. Uh, Eagles, team total over 26 and a half. Nice winner over the Miami Dolphins, which we're going to talk about that game in a little bit, and I can't freaking wait. Uh, Six-point teaser, Lions minus, plus nine and Seahawks minus one and a half. What the hell were the Lions doing today? Holy cow, did they even show up? That was absolutely atrocious for a team that I've been saying is really, really good. Um, and they have been, but that was just something else. They made the Ravens look excellent. Uh, Ryan's bets, 0-0, oh, no. oh, 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 nothing, 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 meant nothing. Trends parlay, we lost. It's unfortunate. We hit the under. The Bucks minus half, one and a half the first half. They were tied at halftime, and the Lions plus three. We already talked about it. It was ugly. But in that push for Ryan... That looked like it was a guaranteed loss at halftime, and then the offense has just stopped scoring, and he somehow got a push. We'll call it lucky, and we'll take it. Anytime touchdowns, one and one, ho hum plus .02, so pretty much just even. Diggs scored a touchdown. Cooper Cup did not. Cup let me down today. I'm not gonna lie. As you can see in the player props, over 90 and a half. He had like seven or eight targets and two or three catches. He just did nothing. It was the Puka Nakua show. And, um, you know, the Steelers got some pressure on Matthew Stafford, too. But it was weird. Over 100 yards, two games in a row. And then he throws up an absolute dud. Uh, Zay Flowers, this one hurt the most, guys. Probably one of my best player prop read of the weekend. He had four catches by, like, midway third quarter. But because of the game script and how it went down, they blew out the Lions. And he just couldn't get one more catch. Rish, Rishi Rice, over 30 and a half receiving yards. That was a nice one. He cashed in the second quarter. As Mahomes continues to just spread the ball around, although Kelsey did have one hell of a game, but um, that's what we got. That's what we did. Week seven recap. Lost a couple units. Nothing horrendous, but not what we want. It is time to get on the winning side. Uh, my game bets eighteen and twelve plus six point nine four units on the year. It is carrying us. Luckily, Ryan's game bets no changes there. Four and eight down point four point three nine units. He's going to turn it around. I feel it. I know it. Um, anytime touchdown bets eight and twelve. Down 2.46 units, and then the player props. This is where it really changed, guys. Uh, from up a few units to down 3.48, 14 and 17. Uh, trends parlay, 1 and 2, plus 3.65 units. It's not official, but if you did count it official, we would be pretty much smack even at zero right now. But it is what it is. Overall record, 44 and 49, down 3.69 units. We can get that back in one week. I'm confident. We keep grinding the last three weeks in the NFL have been bonkers and we're going to talk about that but before we get any farther let's talk that head-to-head -head bet 
Now, it's time for my favorite segment today, baby. That's right. It is the head-to-head bet, and I won. You know it because you can see me smiling. Four and three for Ryan. I am now three and four. I had the Eagles minus two and a half. Ryan had the Dolphins plus two and a half. I am now two and oh, fading those Miami overrated Dolphins. And I got some things to say about them and the game. But Ryan, I'll kick it to you first. How was that game, huh? <laughs> the Dolphins just keep letting me down. I've tried it twice now. Both times, both times I get the L. Like, come on, just, I can't, I can't do it right. Just can't do it. Uh, it looked like it was going good there for a little bit. It had some turnovers, which helped a lot. And then the fourth quarter came and it, it helped the, your team total, which was fantastic. But fourth down, tush push, first down, fourth down again type thing. Another tush push. And then just kept chewing the clock, kept right on moving right when I thought I had a chance to get the ball back and go down and score a touchdown and tie it up. So they definitely let me down. I'm pissed off, disappointed, but I'm glad you hit your bet. So I'll, I'll, I'll take the win that way. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, I did hit two on this one. This is great. Um, I'm going to tell you something, guys. If you guys think the Dolphins are elite, you have problems. Okay. They have beat five crappy teams. And when they face good offenses or good defenses, they struggle. This is not an elite offense. This is an offense that can take care of bad teams. And I mean, take care of them easily. Like they can just score a ton of points on average to below average teams. We have now had three games where they have faced three above average offenses. The other ones were terrible. They scored 20 versus the Bills, 24 of the Patriots. And guess what they did today? How about seven offensive points? That's right. They got one field goal because of a fumble. And after the fumble, when they're in the Eagles territory, they got three yards to just kick a field goal. Now, that's not offensive points, guys. Um, You can count it and say it's 10. That's fine. And then they got a pick six for seven more points. This elite offense that everybody says got seven offensive points. That is it. 244 total yards. The MVP Tua, who lights up other team, other bad teams, 199 passing yards. This Dolphins team is still a good team, but they are not elite. We all need to realize that when other defenses take away their run game, and me and Ryan were talking about this before, uh, when they take away the run game, it's just not the same. When Tua has to do absolutely everything against a good defense, it's not going to cut it. That's just not who they are. Their defense got bullied by the Philadelphia Eagles, um, like he said, the million tush pushes that they had. But also, the Eagles are the best in the business at just chewing up the clock and just driving you down and making you tired. The O-line just pushes you around. This Eagles or this Dolphins team is still going to be a good team. They're still a playoff team and all that. But, man, oh, man, this offense is only elite versus bad defenses. So far, doesn't mean that can't change, but I just want to let you know, I know we got some Dolphin fans out there. Um, who hate whenever I fade the Dolphins. But right now, I feel like I got a good read on this Dolphins team based on their matchups and who they're playing. So, anyways, I love it. That was my rant. But I won, so I'm happy. Uh, I want to get back to 500 in Week 8. Don't you worry, baby. I know it. I know it. I know it. So, that's what we got. Head-to-head bet. Ryan, thanks for the win. That's all we got. And we're going to get into the NFL takeaways. All right, it's time to talk some NFL takeaways from the weekend that we just saw. I just have three quick ones. The first one, NFL's gone absolutely mad the last three weeks. Whether you're watching it, betting it, it's gone crazy. The underdogs just won four games outright this weekend. Four games, including the Patriots win over the Bills. Who the hell saw that coming? Yes, Mac Jones beat Josh Allen. Kenny Pickett beat Matthew Stafford. The Steelers somehow beat the Rams in L.A., but it's really not that much of a surprise. The home field advantage in L.A., why I know it's all money related, but my goodness, they were, couldn't wait to move these teams to L.A. And whenever there's teams like the Cowboys, Steelers, or any other teams, their their stadium becomes a road game. It's just unbelievable. Um, how about the AFC North? They came out with three big wins today. The Bengals were on a bye, but that Browns-Colts game was absolutely insane. And then uh, Bajan, I think is his name. How about him coming in for the Bears, scoring 30 points on the Raiders? No one saw that coming, guys. No one. Do we have a quarterback controversy in Chicago now? Um, The Lions lost by 32 freaking points. The Ravens look like one of the best teams in the league. They're not as good as that game. I will tell you that. The Ravens are a good team, though. I I picked them to win the division. Um, But they just shredded this top defense of the Lions. Lamar Jackson had 357 passing yards. Just absolutely crazy. So my thought, when I see all this and I see a lot of people losing money and it's just been upside down the last three weekends, I just have to remind everyone, you guys already know it, but stay disciplined. Um, really watch your unit count. Watch how many bets you're putting out there. As we get in the middle of the season, the books are smart. They're sharp. They've seen a lot of games. Um, they're, they're smarter than us probably, guys. So we got to really pick and choose our spots, really um, bet the games that we really love. And I'm going to take that to advice, too. Um, I was giving out a lot of bets the first few weeks, and it was working out for us, but last few weeks have not exactly. So um, pick your spots. Hopefully we can get some winners. 
um, it'll turn around. We'll get this done. Unit management is very key. So that's my first takeaway. The NFL is just bonkers. Uh, second one, can we just – this? I got to ask you guys. Can we just name the Chiefs Super Bowl champions already? My goodness, guys. I know you don't want to. You hate them. You hate seeing them win all the time. The Taylor Swift crap, which is annoying, by the way. Um, but this team continues to win games. They just do, no matter how they have to do it. No Tyree Kale, they figured out they win a Super Bowl. They have no receivers, a lack of offense the first month or two of the season. It doesn't matter because now their defense is like a top five defense. It is just insane how they find ways to win. Um, this is probably the best defense Mahomes has had. Does that scare anybody? That is just crazy to me. They have Travis Kelsey and a bunch of wide receivers. And guess what? That's enough. It's enough to win a title. It doesn't really matter. Andy Reid and Mahomes just figure it out. They have guys like Rasheed Rice stepping up. MBS had a big game. Um, they just held. This defense just held the Chargers to zero points in the second half. Zero. It's literally the only thing the Chargers do well is score some points, especially in their passing game. They score, held them to zero points. They had five sacks. I mean, guys, no one's talking about this defense enough. They are legit. If this offense picks it up even more, which, by the way, they look good in the first half. They look like the old Chiefs offense. If they can get anywhere close to where they were, it's over. It's just over. I hate to say it. Um, I do love Mahomes, though. But uh, this Reed-Mahomes combo is just insane. They have the highest winning percentage of any coach and quarterback with a minimum of 80 games. That's right, more than Belichick and Tom Brady. Um, well, Belichick can't win anymore, but that was just with Tom Brady. So um, that was just my second takeaway. The Chiefs are just – it's going to take some big injuries for them not to win the Super Bowl again. I hate to say it, and it's boring, um, but – it just is what it is. So uh, the last one, I need to ask you guys a question. I have five coaches that I think are on the hot seat. Who is going to get fired first? And will they get fired during the season? Brandon Staley, why is he the coach still? No idea. They are two and four this year. They've been awful ever since he took over. He makes terrible decisions. He should be fired. He should probably be the first one fired, in my opinion. Bill Belichick, we talked to it a few weeks ago. He has not been good. Seven losing seasons out of ten without Tom Brady. They're 2-5. and five. I know they got a big win against the Bills today. Big deal, guys. He hasn't showed anything that he can win consistently without Tom Brady. Ron Rivera, is it time to start talking about him? He's a good guy. Everyone loves him. Um, but he's 3-4. and four. Sam Howell looks like he's regressing. He takes more sacks than I've ever seen in my life. It's unbelievable. Uh, Dennis Allen, 3-4 and four in the Saints. He's got a good defensive mind, but he just doesn't know what he's doing offensively. He makes some interesting decisions the last couple of years. I think Dennis Allen probably needs to go maybe be a defensive coordinator again where he fits well. Uh, but, no, sorry, I don't have five. Those are my four. So let me know in the comments below who needs to be fired first or if I'm missing somebody because I think it's Brandon Staley, and he needs to go, like, tomorrow or yesterday, actually. He needs to go yesterday. So that's my third and final takeaway. Leave comments below. Let me know what else uh, storylines, takeaways you got out of the NFL because, guys, we're in this because we love sports, not just betting. So let's talk some football. Uh, but that's what I got. And now, before we get into that Monday Night Football preview, let's talk the free square with Thrive Fantasy. All right, this will be quick, guys. This is the Monday Night Football free square from Thrive Fantasy. Brock Purdy, over a half a passing yard. I'll give you some ideas when we talk Monday Night Football on another leg you can add to this. 100% uh, first deposit match up to $250. It was $500 from Thursday until kickoff on Sunday. Hopefully, some of you guys took advantage of that. If you haven't, it is still first deposit match up to $250. If you lose, use that promo code JABO. Or the link below. Use Brock Purdy over a half a passing yard with another leg. You got a two leg, three, four, five, whatever you want to do. There it is, guys. That's how much money you get. It's literally free money and a half of your bet or a third of your bet or however many legs you want to do on your parlay. But we'll talk some other legs to add to that. If you are eligible, which is over 30 states, go sign up with Thrive Fantasy and use that promo code JABO. Now, let's talk some Monday Night Football. All right, Monday Night Football takes us out to Minnesota. They host the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers minus 7, over under a 43.5. Before we get into the best bet and my two leans for this game, let's talk about it. There's a lot of injuries to star players, so here's what I've seen. Christian McCaffrey, likely to play. It wasn't looking good there for a while, so I don't know if he's going to be on a snap count or what he's got going on, but right now, likely to play. Trent Williams, the big left tackle for the San Francisco 49ers, he is doubtful. Debo Samuel is out. Justin Jefferson obviously is out. He's on the IR for them. And Greenlaw is questionable for the 49ers, a stud defender. 49ers coming off their first loss of the season to the Cleveland Browns with Jake Moody's missed field goal at the end of the game. Now, let's break down the matchup real quick. The 49ers have a top six offense and a top six defense this year. They are still the best team in the NFC, no question. 
Um, they control the run game on both sides of the ball, and the Vikings are the opposite. So 49ers, third best run offense and fifth best run defense. That is controlling the running game on both sides. Vikings, 30th run offense and 18th run defense. It's not even close. Third down conversion rate on offense. 49ers are eighth best in the league at 43.9%. Vikings, 26th best at 34.2%. That's not pretty. Uh, the huge difference is the turnover def uh, deficit also. How about the 49ers? They have the best turnover margin in the NFL. They know how to take the ball away, and they know how to take care of the ball. They have a plus eight turnover margin. The Vikings have the fourth worst turnover margin. It feels like they're fumbling every two seconds. I think they just fumbled during this video. They have a minus seven turnover differential. Um, this, I think it's going to be a big part of the game. I think the 49ers are going to win the turnover battle. The running battle is pretty much almost every battle in this one. But my best bet, like I said, I got one best bet and two leans. So here we go. My bet is a same game parlay. Brandon Ayuk, 50 plus receiving yards and 49ers money line at minus 120 on FanDuel. I got this earlier, gave it out on the premium discord. Let's talk about Ayuk for, for just a second. This is the first guy I went to right when I saw the injuries. This is this is the man for them. No Debo, Debo Samuel, as you know, a hobbled Christian McCaffrey. Ayuk is their biggest weapon. Him and Kittle are going to be their biggest weapon. He's had a great season. He's becoming the number one wide receiver for Brock Purdy. He's had 50-plus receiving yards in four of the five games this year. And he's actually had 75-plus receiving yards in three of the five games. He's averaging a little over 18 yards per catch. I mean, it may not take many catches to get over this. It might just be two or three, and he gets over it. Um, he is now facing the Vikings defense. This is what I love most about it. They've given up the fourth most receiving yards, two wide receivers this season, at over 1,100 yards. They cannot cover receivers, as we all know. They do a decent job against tight ends, but not receivers. Um, Ayuk's real line is around 70, and it's there for a reason, guys. I think he gets 75-plus again. I'm going to just play it safe with 50. Um, so we just need 50 to cash. That's right, baby. And the second part, the 49ers money line. I, you guys all know the 49ers are by far the better team, especially when they don't have Justin Jefferson. Are you kidding me? He is a game changer. Um, and their main strength is their passing game, the Vikings. We know that. Um, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, primetime, baby. Don't we love primetime Kirk Cousins, at least fading him? Um, I don't know how the Vikings move the ball um, consistently, to be honest with you. They're not going to run the ball. They have one of the bottom three run offenses against one of the best run defenses. That's going to be non-existent. It's going to have to be Kirk Cousins, Jordan Addison, K.J. Osborne, and T.J. Hawkinson scoring up and down the field against this 49ers defense. I don't see it happening. I think the 49ers win by two scores. But again, I only have money line. I'm playing it safe. You want to do alt line, minus two and a half, something like that. Um, but whatever you want to do, this is. I just think the 49ers are going to run the ball control the clock, control the line of scrim scrimmage, and they're going to take care of Kirk Cousins on prime time yet again because he does not know how to play then. Um, but that's my best bet. I use 50-plus receiving yards, 49ers, money line. Put that together for minus 120. Uh, if you want to go I use 60-plus, if your odds have gone up, I don't mind that all either, obviously. But a couple leans. Kirk Cousins, under 238.5 and passing yards. He's gone way under in two of the last three, and two of those were against the Chicago Bears and the Carolina Panthers. He has no Justin Jefferson. That makes a big difference. He is a little better at home, uh, but I still think 238 is too high against this 49ers defense. The next one, Jake Moody. He's going to bounce back. We're going kicker, baby. Over two and a half PATs. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. It's point after attempts. He has gone over this in five of six games. He has actually had five plus in two of the last three games. Five. That's right, because the 49ers score touchdowns. This bet is all about touchdowns, and they should score three touchdowns against this Vikings team, even without Debo Samuel and a hobbled Christian McCaffrey. They score three. Moody hits three. They could score four. Maybe he could have room to miss one if he wanted to. But those are my two leans. Cousins under pass yards. Moody over PATs. Again, just leans, not official bets. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what I've been thinking uh, when I analyze this game and all that. So hopefully you guys have a winner. Let me know down below who's winning this game, what your best player prop is, parlay, whatever it is. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully everyone enjoys the Monday night football game between the 49ers and Vikings. Reminder, NBA season starts Tuesday. We have preview videos out with future bets, finals predictions, and much, much more. We've been hitting some good future bets in all sports, so go check those videos out. Monday night football and then NBA on Tuesday. Are you kidding me? Couldn't get better than that. And then baseball playoffs, of course. So go enjoy some sports. We'll be back soon. Thanks again.